Hi, this is Dr. Viral Parekh once again from Calcutta Academy of Radiology. This is the ninth case of the case of the week series. Here is a 23 years old man who was admitted to the hospital with history of multiple episodes of vomiting and convulsions with altered sensorium. On examination, the pulse was 134 beats per minute. Bilateral air entry was normal. Oxygen saturation was 100%. Systolic blood pressure was 60 mm of mercury and capillary blood glucose was 39 mg per 100 ml. An MRI of brain was advised. Here are diffusion weighted images. Here are the T1 weighted images. Here are T2 weighted axial images. Here are flare images. Here are titubated sagittal images. Here are the key images. On this T2 weighted image, we can see that there are hyperintense signals in bilateral lentiform as well as caudate nuclei. These findings are confirmed on the flare images. And besides that, there are hyperintense signals in the bilateral cerebral cortex, especially the insular cortex, which are showing restricted diffusion on the diffusion weighted imaging. In this image also we can see that there are areas of restricted diffusion in bilateral frontal parasagittal cortex as well as the frontal cortex here. The white matter is relatively spared. In these images we can see that bilateral hippocampi are also involved. The cerebellum is spared. The brainstem is also normal. So to summarize the MRI findings, what we have found is that there are bilateral areas of increased signal on both T2 and flare images which show restricted diffusion in bilateral basal ganglia, bilateral cerebral cortex, especially insula, as well as bilateral hippocampi. The cerebellum, brainstem and thalami are spared. The corpus callosum is also spared. So the final diagnosis is hypoglycemic encephalopathy, which is a brain injury that results from prolonged or severe hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is considered when the blood glucose level goes down below 50 mg per 100 ml and it is commonly induced by overuse of insulin or oral hypoglycemic agents. On imaging, it can manifest on MRI as bilateral areas of increased signal on both T2 and flare images affecting the posterior limb of internal capsule, cerebral cortex, especially parato-occipital and insula, hippocampi and basal ganglia. These are typically bilateral. The cerebellum, brainstem and thalami are usually spread in adults, but they are involved in neonates. The sprenium of corpus callosum can be affected, producing the so-called boomerang sign. Restricted diffusion can be an earlier and sensitive tool and is commonly reversible. These findings can be similar to sporadic kurzfeld jakob disease, although the clinical setting should exclude the neurodegenerative disorder. Drug toxicity, viral encephalitis, and metabolic encephalopathy may show similar reversible signal changes or diffusion embedded images and should be considered an imaging-wise differential diagnosis.
Pathogenic mechanisms for restricted diffusion in hypoglycemic encephalopathy include energy failure, excitotoxic edema, and asymmetrical cerebral blood flow. Glucose deprivation leads to arrest of protein synthesis, incomplete energy failure, loss of iron homostosis, cellular calcium influx, and intracellular alkalosis. Excitotoxic edema in contrast to cytotoxic edema does not imply neuronal damage. This is the reason signal changes on MRI diffusion in hypoglycemic encephalopathy are usually transitory and reversible after glucose infusion. Role of MRI brain diffusion in hypoglycemic encephalopathy is to evaluate topographic distribution of signal abnormality of hypoglycemia which decides severity and prognosis of hypoglycemic encephalopathy. If signal abnormality is confined to white matter such as corpus callosum, internal capsule or corona radiata and the signal abnormality regresses on follow-up imaging, it carries a good recovery without a neurological deficit. If the lesions are detected in the cerebral cortex, basal ganglia or hippocampi and the lesions do not regress on follow-up imaging, it is associated with poor outcome. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for your kind attention. See you next week. Till then take care and stay safe.